Hey guys, happy Canada Day. You're listening to episode number 92 of the Keto Diet Podcast. Today we're chatting about, well, I don't exactly know what we're chatting about because we had a guest booked for this episode, but they couldn't make it last minute. So I'm kind of just going to fly by the seam of my pants. We're going to be focusing on non-scale measurements of health, sleep hygiene, breaking up with coffee, how to become more empowered and confident with your own health, and probably a whole bunch more that I haven't planned. So I'm excited to kind of hang out with you for this special solo episode. I've also created a pretty awesome podcast extra for this specific episode. You can get it at healthfulpursuit.com slash podcast slash E92. I got one cool thing for you today. And that is that I've come up with a five-step process on overcoming carb cravings. When I first started the ketogenic diet, although I was super into it, I was also super still addicted to carbohydrates. If that's you and you're just having a hard time dealing with cravings and wanting carbs and you're not sure what to do, you can head on over to healthfulpursuit.com slash sugar. It's a free guide. All you got to do is plop in your name and your email address and you get a free guide to your email that you can have forever and ever and ever. In the guide, I'm chatting with you about how salt intake affects sugar cravings, why your gut health is important and what to do to simplify your breakfast. Okay, let's do this thing. Welcome to the Keto Diet Podcast, the show all about keto for women, so you can burn fat, balance your hormones, heal your body, quickly adapt to a ketogenic diet, avoid common struggles, and get the results you crave. And now, here's your host. You might know her as the Keto Queen. She's the international best-selling author of The Keto Diet, founder of Happy Keto Body, and she loves dipping pork rinds in avocado oil mayo, Leanne Vogel. This is the place in the show where before, for many, many episodes before it, you'd hear a bunch of different ads about a bunch of different partners and food products, but we have gone partner free on the podcast and the blog and everything that I do is no longer sponsored. Am I crazy? Probably. Mm -hmm. So many bloggers and podcasters rely on sponsors to pay for the production of their show, pay their team and like live their life and pay their mortgage. But as a consumer, I'm personally super sick of it. And the last couple of months when I'm listening to podcasts, when I'm on blogs, I just, I'm not feeling like it's an authentic message. And then I get worried that other people are thinking that about my message. So I was like, you know what? This is taking up a lot of my time, a lot of energy. And I feel like I'm not focusing on what I really, really want to focus on, which is the podcast and providing free information and making products and just being awesome. So there's no more partners on the show. And if you're kind of concerned because you really loved the discount codes that I provided on the show, you can head on over to healthfulpursuit.com slash favorites. Okay, so let's get to today's episode. Like I said before, we structured this episode to be a Leanne asked questions of a guest. So I'm just going to read down the notes that I had prepared and we'll just kind of figure out as we go. So... Where this all came about is that I've noticed a huge trend. I mean, so I've noticed a huge thing since I started Healthful Pursuit back, I don't even know, was that like 10 years ago? No, eight years? I don't know. It all melds together. I think I started Healthful Pursuit eight years ago. And when people started coming to the blog, they would ask questions. And at first, it was really easy to manage because I only had two people going to my blog. But now that there's hundreds of millions of thousands, I, of course, I know that that's not actually a number, but there's lots of people to go to the blog. And there's lots of questions and I'm getting lots of messages and emails. It's so hard to answer every question. It's like impossible. And when I study nutrition, I was never interested in helping people. It's so interesting how all of this came about. When I studied nutrition, it was for myself only, but then I felt like I needed to share all of this information because I knew all of it and people were struggling. And so when I started Healthful Pursuit, I wanted to help people. And I wanted to help people because I had been consulting one-on-one -on -one with people. And I find when you consult people, first, you can only see like six people a day. And that's not a lot of people to help. But when I started Healthful Pursuit, I thought, 
thought, oh my gosh, I mean, I could reach hundreds of people in a month as opposed to just a handful. And I could give them the tools that they need to empower themselves to seek answers and do things for themselves. And isn't this great? And what I notice is the bigger healthful pursuit gets, and I mean, woe is me, you know, people are following Healthful Pursuit and you guys want to get information from me. And I'm so thankful that your seeking allows me to continue teaching and learning. And so thank you. Thank you so much for being here and showing up. And when you show up and you're asking questions, it became so challenging for me that I couldn't keep up and I was drowning and helping people one-on-one again. And so This conversation really comes from a place of, I want to make sure that I'm serving you in a way that resonates with what you need. And that's why I'm constantly asking, like, what do you need? What do you want? If you follow me on Instagram, I ask questions all the time about what you need from me. And if you are subscribed to my newsletter, which you can do so at healthfulpursuit.com slash sugar, then you get messages often about how you want to influence the podcast episodes and the questions you have for upcoming guests. And I really want to give you the stuff that you need to be successful. And when I'm planning a new product or a program or a book, I am always asking you, what do you need? What do you want? What are you struggling with? So I can make sure that I'm providing exactly what you need to move forward. So when I get questions that are so easily figure outable, like especially on Healthful Pursuit, I'm like, am I doing my job right? Like what is happening here that they're not getting the answers? And I think one of the biggest things, and people have said this to me constantly, is they didn't know that they could go into Google. Like if you go into the Google machine right now and you type healthful pursuit and then whatever you're looking for, maybe you want to know more about carb ups. So you type healthful pursuit carb ups. You'll find a bunch of things. Google will give you all of the answers and it will come from my blog. If you want to know healthful pursuit cookie recipe, like maybe you saw this cookie recipe on my blog and you can't remember what it was called and you're like, what was it? And you're searching my site and you can't figure it out. You could try Google. So if you start your Google search by healthful pursuit and then whatever you're looking for, it'll bring up a bunch of results. So I wanted to take this time to really try to provide you with the confidence that you need to go out there in the world and gather information. And I think the reason that I get questions about certain things is that you trust my opinion. (laughs) And that blows my mind because I am one person and it just, it's so crazy that you trust me enough to even ask me a question. That's so cool. I just know that I may not be able to answer every single question. Actually, I know I can't answer every single question. I mean, even when I'm on a book tour and it's Q and a time and I'm answering questions, I don't get to all of them. And it's so sad. And I wish, I wish that there was like a bazillion of me and I could answer more questions. But the really cool thing is I got here where I am today by asking a bunch of questions, by reading a bunch of books and Googling a bunch and watching a bunch of YouTube videos. And that's why I try to set up my resources in a way that you can constantly learn and empower yourself to seek the resources and also know when you're being lied to. (laughs) It's something really, really big with Happy Keto Body when we were planning it and going through the content is that we wanted to provide information in a way that would give you the tools to watch somebody else's videos or read a report or read a study or chat with a friend and know how to break apart the conversation and break apart the message so that you could determine if it worked well for you or not. And I think that all comes from a place of feeling empowered and responsible for your health and wellness because I try to show up as much as I can, but sometimes I just can't get to every single message. And this really weighs heavily on me. I have nightmares about it. I get sad about it. And the reason I wanted to start Healthful Pursuit was really to share this message that I have that I feel I was really put on this earth to do. And it is something that I feel like I need to do on such a broad scale. So I will continue taking your suggestions and answering as many of the questions that I can. Just know that if I don't get to your question, that it's not because I don't want to. It's because I'm just one person. And I'm really, really hoping that you can feel the confidence in forging forward and gathering all the data. I I had this analogy the other day, and I'd love to share it with you. It was on an interview I think I did yesterday. I mean, it feels like 
like forever ago these days like meld together so quickly but I was in Destin Florida probably one of my favorite places in the United States right now it's so beautiful and we were on this beach and it had all of these seashells and Kevin and I my husband had a little basket and we were picking up shells and I was picking up shells he was picking up shells coconut our dog was picking up shells with her mouth and there was slobber all over them she's adorable and then we sat down in the sand and we picked through all the shells and we ate some ice cream and yeah the ice cream was delicious and we uh picked up all the shells and I was going through the shells and like ah I don't really like this shell or I really really like this shell I'm gonna keep this and then a couple of days ago, so this is a couple months had passed and a couple of days ago, I found the bag of shells and I'm like, oh my gosh, we're not even using these shells. I wonder if I can just pick out my five favorites and put them around the house. So this is very similar to how we want to approach our eating style is it's okay to gather all of these resources, all of these shells in your basket. And you're not really sure how you're going to use them. You're just learning. And I mean, you have a full-time job and a life too. So you're not going to become a nutrition coach, or maybe that's a goal for you. And that's cool. But you're just picking up things here and there as you download podcasts and read books, just pick them all up in your basket. And then sit down in the sand and ask yourself, do you like this strategy? And or do you like this shell? Very similar. Like, look at it, feel it. How does it feel? And that's very similar to our nutrition practices. Just because somebody says that you need to do this one thing perfectly doesn't mean you actually need to or that it's going to work for you. So once you gather up all these things that you think are going to work, try them on. And in my case, I kind of forgot about most of the shells, but there were a couple. There was one that was like super pointy and thin and was just so Oh, just beautiful. It had spirals. I remembered that shell and I was like, I need to have that one of the, out of this bag. And they'll be very similar in a couple of months. Look at your eating style. What's working for you? What's not? Do you want to change things around? Do you remember another strategy that you maybe tossed aside a couple of months ago that might work for you now? So just know that it's constantly changing and it's okay. And if you can remain confident and empowered in your ability to seek answers, everything is going to be fine. And I'll try to be there as much as I can to provide resources to you and to constantly ask what you need. And really, it comes down to you being responsible for your own health. And this is a huge thing, huge, huge, that I can now sit in a doctor's office and ask questions of the doctor and feel like, I have a right to ask those questions because it's my body. And although they're there to help, they don't know me and they don't know my body like I do. And so by feeling like you are in control of your health and you're responsible for the results of that, I really love that feeling. And if you're not sure, if a doctor says something you're not sure of, go home, watch some videos, do some research, ask some questions and make a decision that's right for you. Because at the end of the day, when you can be your best advocate, if you have children, that'll really help your children. I think the reason why I love being my own advocate is because my mother was, and it was always so great. You know, when my grandma, before she passed away, when she would get sick, my My mom of all her siblings would be there asking questions, talking to the nurse, you know, getting all the details. And I remember seeing that and thinking it's so cool that she's like this warrior fighting for the right things and and for the things that are important to her. And that was really passed down on me. And I hope that if you didn't have a role model like that in your life, that you can be that role model to your children or even just like to random people. You'd be amazed at the impact that you can have on a complete stranger by being passionate. I've noticed that a lot, especially with our travels, because we're meeting so many different people all the time. Some of the things that I do or say, or even my hair color, a lot of women that are older will come up to me and say, good on you for doing what you really love to do in your thirties. Like just rock your bad self. And I think that that's so important and will really push out to other areas of your life. When you're showing up with the passion and taking responsibility, for for your health and your life. 
So another part of this and really um, wanting for you to be empowered and to feel confident with your choices is learning how to transition through things that feel good instead of being stuck with one mentality. I actually chatted about this in another interview the other day, which was probably a couple of hours ago. But again, these podcast recording sessions are always crazy and I never know what I said to anyone. <laughs> so I we were talking about getting stuck on the keto word and feeling like if you're keto, there's only one way to do keto and that's the way you're going to do it forever. And so I think it's really important for us to know that keto is just a word. If you are, you know, diagnosed with something super serious, maybe you've been diagnosed with cancer, or maybe you were born with epilepsy, and you need to follow a ketogenic diet to the T in order to feel great. And prolong your life. That's a very different ketogenic diet than if you are in your mid 40s, early 50s, you want to lose some weight, feel good, you know, get your energy back, have good sleep. And you're like, oh my gosh, if I have five grams of extra carbohydrates, I'm not going to be in ketosis anymore. It doesn't need to be like this. And I know that when we get stuck in these dogmatic approaches, they stop us from actually being able to transform. And all the while we're banging our heads against the table, wondering why on earth it's not working and how we could be such failures when in actuality, it's just that the diet isn't working well for us. And it's okay to, you know, even listen to a podcast episode, maybe one of mine, something that we chatted about or something that I said, you were like, Leanne is crazy. That doesn't make any sense. But then you do it anyway, because, you know, that's what keto people do. No, no, if it doesn't make sense to you, and you don't want to do it. I think that it's totally fine to just not do that thing. And again, like the seashell analogy, like, put it in your little basket, and just like save it for later and see if it fits maybe later. Because one thing I've learned about nutrition and just overall wellness and like life in general, is like what you think you don't need now, you'll probably maybe need later. Like, it's pretty cool, though. Like I can watch a YouTube video about something. Maybe I watched a YouTube video last year. And I gathered some information from it. Maybe I actioned it. And then I watched that same YouTube video like yesterday. I'm going to pick up all different things from it because I'm in a totally different place. And that entire year that I've spent adjusting and bending and flexing has changed the way that I look at my diet. And maybe when I watch that same nutrition video again, I'm getting something completely different from it. So I urge you to like go back to different things that you've done before or that you've read and pick up completely different things. I think you'd be amazed. Like if you remember one of the YouTube videos that you've watched of mine, maybe a couple of months ago, I would go back to that video and you can do so by going to Google and type in healthful pursuit and then whatever the video was about and you'll find it on Google. Watch it again. And I guarantee you, you'll find other things that you don't even remember were in the video the first time. And in Happy Keto Body, when we were um, putting together all the outlines for it, I, at the end of all of my videos, I said, did you miss something or are you totally confused? Like give it a break and come back to the video. And I guarantee you're going to find something else in this video that you didn't hear the first time. And it's so true. Even when I read books again, or I'm a big audiobook reader, I love audiobooks, which technically isn't reading, but I still like to think it is. <laughs> it's just so much better for my brain and my life. And so I can listen to an audiobook and I've done it. Like, You Are a Badass, I've listened to probably three times. And each time I listen to it, there's something different. So I wouldn't discount one resource. If you've read it in the past, go back to it and see what comes up for you. I think the conversation of goals is also a really big one with this in that if we constantly use our weight as a measure of our health, we're probably going to be disappointed a lot of the time. But there's so many more biomarkers that we can go off of. And when I say biomarkers, a lot of people get concerned that I'm saying like, go spend hundreds of dollars on blood work. And you're thinking, I don't have $100. That's not at all what I'm saying. You can use your sleep your cravings, your hunger, your period 
as biomarkers to see where you are with your life. So if you are having the worst sleeps ever, no amount of blood testing. I mean, yeah, some blood tests would help you determine what that is. But if you if you don't have access to that and you're trying to figure out like, am I healthy? Am I not? Where can I improve? Try to look at just your day to day lifestyle and the behaviors that you have in your life and how you can adjust those things to make it better. So if you are you know, working night and day from 6am to 9pm without any breaks, and you're exhausted, and then you have the worst sleep ever. Well, like, yeah, and a blood test isn't going to tell you that it's just going to say, yeah, like you're inflamed. And you know, your cortisol is high, or it's imbalanced. But understanding what is happening and looking at the behaviors in your life, it's very rare that I will talk to somebody and after asking them a couple of questions, they won't know what they're doing, quote unquote, wrong for their body. Like, it's so crazy. When I get questions, it's always like, I'm not sure if I should be trying carb ups. All these things are happening in my life. And, you know, my thyroid is low. I'm craving carbs. I can't seem to fast. Do you think I should try carb ups? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Because you came to that answer on your own. I feel like a nine times out of 10, it's like, we always ask questions because we want permission from somebody else to be like, yeah, it's okay. Trust your body. But the most powerful thing, and you got to try this next time you're like, Hmm, should I do this? And like, here are the reasonings behind this, but should I do it? Do it. And if it works out, you're going to be like, Whoa, I just trusted my body and did something that it told me to do. And then I did it and it worked out. And then it's a muscle that you continue to grow and it grows and grows and grows until you're an intuitive person, which you have been all along. You just get in touch with that intuitive person. And the same goes for different markers. So if your sleep is bad, you can adjust the behaviors around your life for your sleep. If, you know, your period is painful, adjusting it so that perhaps I find my period is most painful when I overdo it with fructose during my carb ups. So if I have a painful period, I'm like, Leanne, you ate too much fructose this month. And then I lower it down. So there's always an answer to adjusting these biomarkers. And chances are you already know the answer. Another piece that this improves is that you're able to stop doing the things that aren't serving you. So I get this question a lot is like, how were you able to go from, you know, vegan to keto? How are you able to just start eating carbs on a ketogenic diet or just do all these things? It feels so random, like you just did it. And I think a lot of it is just building that muscle of trusting your body and knowing and a lot of it's trusting your body and also trusting the universe. Like, you know, when I had this crazy idea to, dro- to drop sponsors on the blog and the podcast, it meant a huge business change and a huge change overall. But sometimes we just need to trust the universe. The universe has our back and so does your body and it'll all just work out. So if you're struggling with quitting coffee or, you know, dropping carbs, or I don't know, eating more protein because you're scared of animal protein, whatever it may be, you might want to repeat to yourself, like, what's the worst thing that can happen? If I do this and it doesn't work out, where am I going to be? And if that doesn't work out, where is it going to go? And oftentimes you'll find that we like pump up this fear to be something that's not even real. And it stops us from living our lives because fear is trying to protect us from something. I hope that that was helpful. I feel like I just talked a mile a minute. Oh my gosh, I have so much more to say. But for now, we'll cut it off there. And the show notes and full transcript for today's episode can be found at healthfulpursuit.com forward slash podcast forward slash E92. Thanks for listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. Join us again next Sunday to discover more Keto for Women secrets for your fat-fueled life. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, recipes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be confused as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcasts reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. 
please consult a qualified physician for medical advice. And always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.